So Capture One recently released an update for their iPad app and since I'm using a Z9 right now, so I wanted to test out the capabilities or the tethering capabilities of connecting the Z9 with the iPad. So, and before I get into the features, you know, why would I use an iPad for tethering in the first place? So the thing is that, I mean, since I'm a product photographer and most of my work is anyways done in a studio, in a controlled environment. So if you're shooting in a studio, uh, definitely shooting on a MacBook Pro or an iMac is way better than using an iPad. Because on those computers, uh, you definitely get the live view, you get a lot more features and you can also take simultaneous multiple backups of the raw files as you're doing the shoot. And you can also, if required, open the raw files in Photoshop uh, to see uh, if you're doing compositing, uh, to take any decisions, you know, during the shoot. So that is possible only on a laptop or a computer. So why would I use an iPad for a shoot? Now, you know, of course, first thing is that it is portable. It's very easy to carry. So if it's an on-location shoot and it's a simple shoot where you just want to see the photos on a bigger screen and maybe do some minor adjustments like uh, correcting the white balance or things like that. So in those situations, an iPad can come in really handy. So now let's look at the ways of connecting your camera with the iPad. Now, if you have a new camera like the Z9 or any other newer camera bodies, uh, those can be connected with the iPad wirelessly as well. But the wireless connection right now is pretty much useless because uh, to transfer a single raw file from Z9 to iPad takes around 30 seconds. So it's not good at all. And I wouldn't recommend using the wireless connection as of now. But I mean definitely Capture One is going in the right direction. And if with future updates the speed gets better, so I'll be really happy to use the wireless connection. So right now the best option is to use either a Tether Tools cable or you can also use the cable that comes with the camera. Like in this case, this is the cable that came with Z9 and I'm using this cable along with a USB hub to connect the camera to the iPad and the speeds that I get is as good as what I'm getting on the computers. Right, so let's connect the camera to the iPad and then I can show you uh, the interface and the features. Right, so it's uh, pretty straightforward. You just plug in the US cable in the USB port and use a USB hub so that you can connect this uh, USB-A uh, connection to the iPad. And by the way, if you want to power the iPad during the shoot, that is also possible. So I confirmed it with the Capture One and they told me that if you use a USB hub uh, with the pass-through power delivery port, then you can also simultaneously charge the iPad when using your camera in a tethering mode. Right, so the camera is connected and now let's look at the interface of the Capture One app on iPad. Uh, so if I switch on the camera here, it detects the camera very quickly. So the connection is, uh, the wired connection is absolutely flawless. Uh, it works very well. So now you can see on the screen that the Z9 is connected. And if you look here, so I mean I did a uh, test shoot to see the tethering capabilities. So then those are the images you are looking at the screen. So if you look at the left panel on the screen, you see all the options to organize the photos. So the next tab you see here is the cameras and this is what we want. So you can see that the Z9 is connected so the connection is working perfectly fine. The next option here is for creating new albums and this is very similar to creating a new session or a new catalog in the desktop version of Capture One. Right, so if I tap here, so this is the album that I created for this particular shoot which was a test shoot. Right, so now let's go through the images here and if I open let's say this one then you get a new interface where you see all these options and by the way guys the interface is very fluid I mean it handles the raw images very well so if I swap through the images you see it is so fast okay and if I zoom into the images also it works very well so I'm very happy with the performance of this app uh, so now let's look at the options on the left side the first one here is to uh, give a star rating or to add a color tag and this is really helpful to sort all the images when you do a shoot so i always do this for every single shoot i basically just go through the images and at the time of shooting and i keep assigning them color tags so if you see here i've assigned a green color tag so let's say this is one of the photos that i'm going to use in the final psd so i can just tap here and add a color tag right so doing so you know once i'm done with the shoot i simply go here in the filter option and I choose the colors that I've assigned to the photos. So if I click on the green tab, I see all the images that I've finalized for the uh, PSD, right, to be edited in Photoshop. So this is a really good feature. The next one, if you look at the left side, is this where you can add filters. 
and as a commercial photographer shooting products i i never use filters so this is not for me the next option right here is we can uh, you know correct the uh, key stoning effect so if you're shooting uh, let's say products from a lower angle and you want to correct those you can do that easily here so let's say if i want to correct the vertical key stoning option uh, i choose that on the left side and then on the right side you get this dial where you can change the settings okay so you see how smooth it is it's working really well so this is how you can change the key stoning effect but right here i mean i'm not getting any key stoning so i'll just uh, undo this effect and move on to the next option here where uh, you get all these options to change the white balance the exposure uh, hdr clarity dehaze color editor and vignetting so the one that i use here is the white balance tab and uh, you know basically this is the only thing that i'll be using on the ipad most of the times so i can just correct the white balance again using the uh, dial on the right side if i want to adjust the white balance and let's say i like this setting here for the kelvin scale and for the tint let's say that i love this setting so once i have adjusted the white balance for this particular image i can tap on this option at the bottom left you see so this will copy all the adjustments so now when i shoot more images this effect will be automatically applied on all the further images right so this is a really cool feature and if you see here i mean uh, at the bottom right you get all these options to hide the uh, the thumbnails at the bottom and various other options you also get a, a button right here at the bottom uh, right to shoot tethered so at this point we can also test the tethered speed so first let me remove this uh, filter that i had applied for the color tags so we can see all the images right here so if i tap on this uh, button remote button here let's see yeah there is the image so it is super fast and the speed is as good as you get on a desktop so let's get back to the images that i had sh shot in the test shoot and the last option here on the left side is where you can uh, add some sharpening you can reduce the noise add some film grains and more so basically uh, i mean as i told earlier that the option that i'll be using on ipad most of the times is correcting the white balance that's all right and another option here is that if i want to see the images full screen all i have to do is just tap on the photo and they will get a full screen view right so this is pretty much it i mean this is how i'm going to use uh, uh, ipad for tethering right so once i'm done with the shoot i can go back and using the color tag filter i can see all the shortlisted images right here so these are the photos that i'll be using in photoshop to create the final image right so once i see them on the screen i can tap on select select all and tap on share option here so here i get various options to export the images so if you look at the format i will choose here originals and doing so will export the raw files as it is without any compromise in the quality this is uh, what you get from the camera okay and if i tap on eip then you can also export the effects that you have added in capture one uh, without any uh, quality loss right so in this case i'll tap on originals and export so you see all the options here uh, i can simply use the airdrop option to uh, uh, send all these files to my iMac or I can take a backup on an external hard drive if I'm at a location right so once I have all these images on my iMac then the workflow is pretty similar to working on a desktop and I can take it further from there right guys so that's pretty much how I use my iPad for tethering if you have any questions drop them down in the comment section and I'll see you in the next one cheers bye